So this is the Bloody A Bedless, which is a clone of the Bloody A70, which Bloody also sells on their site. This mouse was made for Bedless Noob, which is a bridging YouTuber, I'm sure he needs no introduction if you're watching this video, but it was made with drag clicking in mind. You guys know that I had to get my hands on this mouse so I could make a video on it. But before we get right into the video, I do want to say if you guys are looking for a new desk pad, then look no further. Head on over to the Flow Shop, it's a PC peripheral shop that I own. Right now we are selling our Mount Fuji desk pad in four different colorways, they're all in stock ready to ship, so if you want one, then go ahead and check out the link in the description. The only difference between the Bloody A Bedless and the A70 is the coating, and this coating is supposed to be a lot better for drag clicking. This mouse is $40, which is more on the cheaper side of gaming mice, but I wouldn't call it a budget mouse. There's things like the Razer Viper Mini, which are cheaper. Opening the box up, we're met with some bloody stickers as well as some paperwork and warranty information. And after removing all the plastic, you're met with the mouse and all of its bloody glory. I actually thought that the red part of the mouse feet were stickers that you were supposed to peel off of the mouse feet, but no, those are the mouse feet itself. I've never seen a mouse use red feet, so I thought that was pretty interesting. So let's start off with the physical appearance of this mouse, starting with the shape. The shape of the Bloody A Bedless is a large ambidextrous shape with side buttons only on the left side of the mouse. It's actually much bigger than I expected it to be. Uh, here it is compared to my Logitech G Pro Wireless, and the mouse is slightly bigger than the G Pro Wireless. It's notably wider, which makes it feel very, very large in your hands. I'd definitely say that this mouse is catered towards people with larger hand sizes. Okay, so there's two things I want to point out about the shape that made the mouse feel very awkward and uncomfortable to use. The first thing is this crease that goes down the middle of the mouse. So I don't know why Bloody thought it was a good idea to put a crease through the middle of the mouse hump, but it does not feel good. You can feel it in your hands whenever you palm or claw grip the mouse, and it's just very awkward and uncomfortable feeling. I don't know why their hump couldn't be flat like every gaming mouse ever, but it's definitely something that takes away from the comfort of the mouse. The second thing I want to talk about are the sides of the mouse. So this is the left side of the mouse where your thumb sits, and you can see that it is slanted outwards. Typically on most other gaming mice, like this is a Viper Ultimate for example, the sides are curved inwards, and that provides a groove to your thumb to sit in, but on the Bloody A Bedless, they're slanted outwards, it's like a slope. So when you grip the mouse with your hands, your thumb is always on a slope, and it just feels very, very weird and very uncomfortable. It makes it awkward to get a good grip on the mouse, and on my opinion, they should have kept the sides of the mouse either flat or tapered inward. The next thing I want to talk about is the weight of this mouse, and this mouse weighs a whopping 150 grams. To put that in perspective, the G Pro Wireless, this mouse right here, weighs 80 grams. The Bloody A Bedless is almost double that, and the G Pro Wireless is considered a heavy mouse by today's standards. The extremely heavy weight combined with the awkward shape makes this mouse very, very unideal to use in any aim intensive game. I noticed this while PvPing, my aim just felt very sluggish to me, and stuff like sorting out my inventory and chest looting just felt very, very slow and sluggish. But I was doing some thinking, and I was thinking maybe this could be a good thing, because this mouse is intended for people who drag click and people who god bridge. And when you god bridge, you don't want your mouse to move around a lot, so maybe it's a positive? If you god bridge, leave a comment, let me know if high weight is something that you value, but I personally think that 150 grams is way too excessive. Really quickly before we move on, I want to mention the sensor and the mouse feet. The Bloody A Bedless uses an Avago 3050, which is an optical sensor. Tracking is completely fine, if you're worried about the sensor, then don't. And I also want to talk about the mouse feet. These are red feet, and they're made of metal. It's really interesting. I've never seen metal feet on a mouse before, but the glide is okay. It's not better than PTFE on my opinion, but it's not terrible, so it's it's passable. But 100% PTFE feet such as core pads are much better feet on my opinion. Okay, so let's now talk about the coating of the mouse, which is supposed to be one of the main selling points of the Bloody A Bedless. The Bloody A Bedless is supposed to have this magical coating that just makes drag clicking easier. So what is this magical coating that Bloody spent years of research and development to custom make for drag clicking? It's rubberized plastic. That's all it is. <laughs> Yeah, this coating was something that was really, really overhyped in the videos that I was watching of the Bloody A Bedless. People were making out to be this special coating that nobody has ever felt before, but it's just rubberized plastic. It's the same exact material that's used on my Osu pen. The black part right here, it's literally the same exact thing. To give you guys an idea of what the coating feels like, if you rub your finger across it, it feels slightly grippy. However, if you tap it with your fingernail or you scratch it with your fingernail, it just feels like regular plastic. And a mouse that has a similar coating is the G Pro Wireless Superlight. The Superlight also has some some type of rubberized plastic material, and it's actually a very easy mouse to drag click on, just like the Bloody A Bedless. But the Super Light will only drag click like 4 CPS because it doesn't have an adjustable debounce time. I will say though that rubberized plastic is a very good material for drag clicking, I do recommend it. It's very easy to do, you don't need any tape or anything like that. 
I recorded a few clips of me using this mouse to reduce and to bridge. I just started god bridging, so it's still new to me. I can't really do the jump, I sort of mess up at the jump, but I can god bridge up until the jump pretty fine. And because of the coding, I do think that this is one of the easiest mice to drag click on. I've had the cane, I've had the model O, and compared to both of those mice without any night. tape, the bloody is the easiest to drag click out of the box. Okay, so it's a really good mouse for drag clicking, but what about other clicking methods? For butterfly clicking, this mouse is also really good. Because it has an adjustable debounce time, it can double click and you can butterfly 20 CPS on it pretty easily. And the buttons are wide enough for you to have two fingers on each button. If you're looking for a mouse purely for butterfly clicking though, I still wouldn't recommend this mouse over something like the Model O or the Model D. Both the Model O and the Model D have adjustable debounce times and wide enough clicks, but they also have really good shapes and they weigh a lot less than the Bloody A Bedless. And I'd recommend the Model O or the Model D over the bloody A bedless just because it's easier to aim with them, on my opinion. Now surprisingly, this mouse was actually not a good mouse to jitter click with at all. And the reason for that is because the buttons on this mouse, at least on my copy, have a significant amount of pre-travel more than any other mice that I've used. So what do I mean by pre-travel? Pre-travel is basically the amount the button moves before it actually registers a click. This is all pre-travel. This is the mouse button moving down without actually clicking. And because the mouse buttons have so much pre-travel, it gives the clicks a very mushy feeling. When you compare it to something like the G Pro Wireless, the G Pro Wireless has barely any pre-travel. The mouse button barely moves down at all before the mouse actually clicks. And because the bloody A bedless has so much pre-travel, that actually makes jitter clicking take a lot more effort. So here's a clip of me jitter clicking on the bloody A bedless. And take note of how many times my clicking sort of cuts out and it pauses. And now here's a clip of me doing the exact same thing, but on my G Pro Wireless. And look how I barely pause while jitter clicking and my CPS is much more consistent. It's not impossible to jitter click on the Bloody A Bedless, but it takes significantly more effort than it does something like the G Pro Wireless. I don't know if maybe I have a defective copy of the mouse, and only my mouse has this much pre-travel to it, so if you happen to own the mouse, then be sure to let me know in the comments of the video. Okay, so in conclusion, what do I think about the Bloody A Bedless? For drag clicking, it's probably one of the best mice that you can buy for drag clicking out of the box without any tape. The rubberized plastic coating does make it easier to drag click than other mice. However, because of its really awkward shape, its excessive weight, and the mushy feeling clicks, I don't really think that this is a good mouse for PvP. If you want a butterfly, go with a glorious mouse. If you want a jitter click, go with a G Pro Wireless. I just would not recommend the Bloody A Bedless for anything other than drag clicking. But that's not to say that it's not unusable. I still was able to use this mouse in PvP, and I still was able to get some good clips. It's just nowhere near my favorite mouse for PvP though. But anyways, with that being said, that's gonna be pretty much it for this review, so I wanna say thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really do appreciate it if you made it to the end of the video. If you guys wanna help support me, usual links are in the description. But with that being said, thank you so much for watching once again, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.